Dawood Marion, and today I'm going to talk to you about using books for inspiration and reference. It's very important that you stay inspired as a visual artist. Um, I've actually went through periods of time in the past where I'm not creating very much, and I'm sure you probably have experienced that before, or if you haven't experienced that, you may experience that if you don't do the proper things which is feed your inspiration, feed your creativity. And um, I was actually told like this one time is that look at your creativity as a bucket. And in this bucket is all of your inspiration and creativity. And then every time you decide to do a piece of artwork, you dip into that creativity and then you pour it onto the canvas or into Photoshop or whatever your medium is. And you just continue to create and you, you're taking a cup, you're dipping into your creativity and you're pouring it out, taking it out, pouring it out. And what happens is, if you know uh, anything about going into the bank account or going into any sort of uh, store place, you're going to deplete that place of what it had. And so in this case, we're talking about creativity. So you're going to deplete yourself of creativity and inspiration. So that's where books come in. You use these books to keep yourself inspired to want to work. Um, I'm always buying books. I've been buying books for a number of years. This is just very, very small uh, taste of how many books I have. I actually buy books. Every time I pass by a bookstore, it seems like. Um, I remember when uh, I was in school, and you know, when you're in school, you don't have very much money, and I was going to the bookstore like every week. I was spending rent money, bill money on books, and that's how important they are. But the, the cool thing is that back then, I was felt like I was getting myself in trouble buying these books, but when I really look at it, it's like I have them all now. I have a wealth of inspiration and knowledge uh, to, to feed on. So I want to talk to you today about how I use these books, why they're so important to collect, and the difference between using uh, actual physical books versus looking on the internet and getting images for your inspiration. All right. So what I also wanted to talk to you about is where to get your books from. I like to shop at the secondhand bookshops. Barn, uh, Barnes and Nobles and Borders and big chains like that are typically going to be more expensive. So I stick to the, sec the secondhand stores, the half price bookstores, um, Salvation Army, Goodwill, places like that. And the cool thing is about when you go to those places, you never know what you're going to find. And they typically have the older books too that are out of print and are very hard to find. I found many, many books that are online for $100 or 60 bucks, and I got it for maybe 10 bucks and sometimes $5, you know, depending on what type of bookshop it is. If it's a used bookstore, more than often they're going to have a database and they know the price of the book, they know the worth of the book. So they'll give you maybe 75%, uh, I mean not 75, like 40 to 50% discount on the actual cover price of the book. But if you go to, let's say, uh, a, a little boutique, a small thrift shop that sells all different types of used items like clothes and gadgets and things like that, you'll probably get the book for a little cheaper because a lot of times they get the books in and they don't really do bother to check the price of it. I know Salvation Army and Goodwill, they don't bother to check the price of what the book value is, so you're going to get them cheaper at places like that. Um, so that's definitely what I would recommend for you to do as far as collecting your books. So another topic that I wanted to talk to you about is why books versus searching on the internet and getting images for your inspiration to fuel your creativity. This is a very good topic to, uh, to, to really think about. When you're looking on the internet, 
you do typically what I do is I do a Google search. Maybe I'm looking for, you know, goblins or, you know, a certain type of artwork, or maybe I'm looking for figure paintings or things like that. I'll just type in figure painting, go to Google and look at the images and things like that. And oftentimes that leads you to different websites and blogs where you can see a lot of this information. And that's really cool. But the problem is, is that you're going to be very limited in the range of uh, different artists that you get to look at. For example, I like to look at artists of the past because um, if you're looking at artists of the present, you're going to be doing what they're doing. Whereas a lot of the great artists of today are looking at artists of the past. And that's the secret there is that, you know, when I go on to sites like DeviantArt and a lot of concept art sites, um, a lot of these youngsters are looking at the same artwork that their friends are doing, their peers are doing, people their age are doing. But what, and then also sometimes they're looking at their favorite artists of today. And what they don't understand is that their favorite artists of today, a lot of times they're looking at artists of the past and that's where they're getting their inspiration. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that you're getting your creativity from a source that's going to give you, uh, getting your inspiration from a source that's going to give you um, a wide range of material to look at. So the one thing, you can search artists of the past on the internet, but what I find is that you're going to be limited in the amount of images you get to see and the quality of those images. The reason why is because let's say I take this book by Brian Froud. It's the Goblins of the Labyrinth. And I like this book. And let's say I want to share it with my friends and people on Facebook or other different art websites. What's going to happen is I'm going to run into copyright issues because at the beginning of every book, there's a page that tells you the publisher, and then there's also a copy, the copyright information. And copyright means just what it is. It means the right to be able to copy the artwork. So if I can't copy this artwork, then that means I can't publish it on the web because technically publishing on a web is still copying it. You're copying it and you're putting it into a digital medium and then you're sharing it with people. So that's, that's against the law. That's not cool. And you wouldn't want somebody to take your images that you put in book form specifically for people to buy your work and then you have someone scanning in or photographing the whole book and then putting it on the internet. So that's why you're not going to see a lot of the... Um, really, really good stuff in most cases of a particular artist's work on the internet from an artist of the past. So that's why I like to look at these books because when you get books, you actually get a wide, variety, wide variety of subject matter and, 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 and works that a particular artist did over a period of time, whereas you won't find all of those Im images on the internet. So I'm gonna be doing separate videos to kind of go through and review some of these books that I have just to show you, give you some ideas of some uh, books you may want to get and pick up for your collection. I highly recommend you build up a collection of books because it's just going to skyrocket your understanding of how things are done when you read about the artist and get deeper into, you know, different images that aren't on, available on the internet of what these artists are doing. And I also recommend that you look at artists of the past. Um, I don't care what age you are, what style of art you do, what part of the universe you come from. You want to make sure that you're looking at different artwork, all different types of artwork. Don't limit yourself. I look at architectural drawings. I look at fashion design. I'm looking at fashion magazines, um, looking at anime, looking at uh, all different types of stuff. And, and, uh, and also I'm looking at the fine art. I'm looking at, you know, the Egon Shealy's. I'm looking at the, 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 the uh, Leonardo da Vinci's and, 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 and Gustav Klimt's and things like that. You want to look at all types of stuff and that's going to feed your visual vocabulary. The visual vocabulary again is all of these images that you've seen all of your life, they're stored somewhere in your subconscious mind and when you need to recall on this information, your mind will do so at the adequate time. And that's going to definitely help 
your work stand out and be a little bit different from a person who's not looking at inspirational work. They're not looking at books. They're not really looking at things outside of their comfort zone. You know, so you have your friends, if you and a group of friends, if you're all doing anime, your stuff is going to stand out and be a little bit different because you're looking at different stuff. All right, so it's going to go into your subconscious and it's going to process that information and it's going to come out in your work, okay? Um, I'm not going to really explain too much how that works right now, but I just want to definitely say that it will make a big, big difference. When you look at the most popular artists, the, the most successful artists, the giants, uh, they always had a collection of books that they look to for inspiration, to fuel their creativity, and to learn different techniques and things like that. So you, a lot of times you're not going to get a lot of this stuff on the internet. You're going to get some tutorials here, some pictures there, and a lot of times the pictures are very small. They're not very large. And, um, so when you get these books, they're, they're, they're good quality. The images are printed on, on nice paper, and they're very good quality. You can actually see... Like when I, when I look at this picture right here, I can actually see the, the texture of the canvas on this image. Whereas a lot of times when you have pictures on the internet, most of the times they were taken uh, with, with bad quality. Somebody may have went to an art museum and just snapped a picture of a painting and the quality is just not as good. So you want to make sure that you're getting your stuff from good sources. Um, another thing I want to recap on is where you get your books from. Once a week, go out and go to a bookstore, go to a used bookstore and just look for books. I'm always out looking for books. Um, I have a bookstore, I have a couple bookstores that I go to very frequently and I, I maybe once a week, twice a week, I'll go in there just to see what they have. And um, you be, I'm, I'm always like blown away because I'll find gems like this book here, you know, and, um, and other books. So thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something in this video. I'm going to be doing a lot more. Uh, go to my website, dawoodmarion.com. That's D-A-W-O-O-D.com. And check out my artwork and check out the things that I have on there for you to download. And there's some drawing information. And send me an email. Let me know what you think about, you know, either my artwork or maybe you might have some questions about something that I'm saying in these videos. Don't be afraid to send, send me a, a message. There's a little green uh, tag on the side of my website. You just click on it and send me an email with your information or questions that you may have. Okay. So thanks for watching and thanks for listening.